Let's talk about the 25H2 update. It was released on September 30th of 2025, and Microsoft says it's available to all eligible devices, but what they mean is it's available to your computer if it feels like cooperating today. So Windows 11 25H2 shares the exact same code base as Windows 11 24H2. That's essentially what this new update is, but wearing a name tag that says, hi, I'm 25H2. Now, if you're already on 24, but updating to 25, it requires a 200 kilobyte enablement pack Package. That's smaller than this image. This package doesn't install new files, it just flips some switches that says, okay, now you can use things that were already there. And for anyone that's still on 23H2 or earlier, well, congratulations, you get a full operating system swap. The traditional Windows update experience of watching a progress bar lie to you for over an hour. Now, the installation is supposed to be 40% faster, thanks to something called Shared Servicing Branch. So, what's new in 25H2? I'm glad I asked myself that question. Windows 11 25H2 now supports Wi-Fi 7, or for the nerdy people, IEEE 802.11BE. This is the enterprise-grade wireless networking that offers speeds up to 46 gigabits per second on a 320 megahertz channel with multi-link operation, or MLO, for simultaneous transmissions across multiple bands and support for up to 16 spatial streams. You won't benefit from this unless you have a Wi-Fi 7 router, which you probably don't, but is there. IT admins can now remove pre-installed Microsoft Store apps like ClipChamp and Teams, and this feature has been requested for approximately a thousand years but Microsoft finally heard our feedback and they even added a group policy for it, but only for enterprise and education editions. So if you're a home user like most people, you get to enjoy the apps you never asked for. Microsoft says 25H2 includes significant advancements in build and runtime vulnerability detection coupled with AI assisted secure coding. They won't explain what AI assisted secure coding means and neither will I because I don't know either. The parts of the Windows kernel have been rewritten in Rust, which is a programming language that makes developers feel superior to other developers. There is also administrator protection, which prevents malware from gaining admin rights unless the malware asks very nicely. They completely removed PowerShell 2.0, which was from 2009, so it had a good run. I mean, 16 years is a long time to be obsolete and still be installed by default, but ask the Microsoft way. There's a new feature called Quick Machine Recovery. If your computer has boot problems, it automatically connects to Windows Update to download the fixes for you. This assumes that your network drivers work during a boot failure, which is pretty optimistic. The start menu has been redesigned again. Pinned apps appear at the top, recommended in the middle, and all apps at the bottom. You can customize which sections appear, and Microsoft is still trying to figure out what people want in the start menu 20 years after Windows XP. The mystery continues, I guess, but you can now see the battery percentage in the taskbar without clicking anything. Revolutionary stuff, Microsoft. It only took four years of Windows 11 to implement a feature that Windows 7 already had. But speaking of things that actually work, unlike Windows Update, let me tell you about something that saved me over $300 this month while buying new items for my PC setup. It's called Cooper. It's a free browser extension that automatically finds coupon codes for you while you're shopping online. So there's no searching Google for new egg promo code 2025 and trying 15 different codes that you just know aren't gonna work. So I'm on Newegg right now trying to buy a USB drive because I desperately need to flash Linux onto my laptop as soon as possible. And as you can see, it says $17.59 over here, but right below it, there are lower prices at three stores. So we're gonna click this, go right over to here, and it will show you every single store with every single price right here. So it looks like on eBay, there's somebody selling one for $16.85. If we look at the most expensive price, CDW and Best Buy are both trying to sell these for $30. That's almost a $15 difference compared to Newegg or even eBay right here. Imagine how much RAM you could buy with the savings from Cooper. I mean, not very much RAM because of the unfortunate price right now, but Cooper can find you some coupon codes on that RAM to make it a little less heavy on the wallet. So if we actually go over to B&H Photo to look at this same USB drive, Cooper will actually pop up and start trying these coupon codes for you just to see how much money it can save you. And it looks like we've got the best price right here. So on top of the savings that we already have from this low price, it found a code for a free cleaning cloth. But I use this every single time I need to shop for anything for myself or my 
my family, and I cannot tell you how much money I've saved with this. With support across over 3 million stores from Walmart to Amazon to Best Buy, there's free hidden coupons, automatic price comparison, and extra cash back with no minimum purchase. And unlike the Windows updates, it just works. So click the link down in the description to install Coopert for free and see how much you could save. But let's discuss why you're really here. The bugs. Windows 25H2 arrived with problems. Shocking, I know. The October 14th security update, KB5066835, broke USB keyboards and mice in the Windows recovery environment. You know, the environment you actually need when Windows breaks. Your keyboard and mouse don't work there anymore. This is what we would call irony, or nightmare fuel, depending on your perspective. The USB devices will work fine in the actual operating system, just not in the recovery tools to design the fix the operating system. It's like having a fire extinguisher that only works when there's no fire. Now, Microsoft released a hotfix six days later, KB5070773. They called it an out-of-band update, which is technical speak for, oops, we really messed up this time. Now, some Blu-ray, DVD, and digital TV apps couldn't play protected content. Apps using enhanced video renderer with HDCP enforcement would show copyright protection errors, frequent playback interruptions, or black screens. Now, streaming services were unaffected, so at least you could still watch Netflix while your legally purchased Blu-rays just refused to play. Now, Microsoft partially fixed this in the September preview update, and then fully fixed it in October, then fixed it again in November. I guess the third time's the charm, as they say in software development. Now, after installing 25H2, some users could not access localhost, the address that should always work because it literally refers to the device that you're using. Server-side applications relying on HTTP.sys experienced issues with incoming connections and web developers everywhere celebrated by screaming into the void. Now, this was supposed to be fixed in updates released after September 29th. Whether it was actually fixed depends on which forum you read and what day of the week it is. On enterprise systems, core Windows UI components just stopped working. We're talking about Explorer, the start menu, settings, taskbar, and Windows search. You know, minor features, nothing important. This affected devices provisioned with updates from July 2025 and onward. Microsoft clarified this is very unlikely to occur on personal devices used by individuals, but what that really means is home users were mostly fine, corporate IT departments, however, got to experience a fresh new kind of suffering. The bug is still being investigated, and Microsoft's official stance is essentially, we're working on it, please be patient, have you tried turning it off and on again? Task Manager would sometimes keep running in the background after you closed it. Multiple instances would accumulate like digital hoarders. This affected system performance, which is ironic because people usually open Task Manager to improve system performance. And now Microsoft says this is mitigated, not fixed. But hey, there's a group policy for it because the solution to Windows problems is always more group policies. Many users reported that the October cumulative update KB5066835 simply refused to install. Error codes included um, all of these. That's four different ways for an update to fail. Diversity, I guess. And the troubleshooters didn't fix it. The DISM and SFC commands didn't fix it. Clearing update cache didn't fix it. Some users resorted to manually downloading the update from Microsoft's catalog and others just gave up and accepted their fate. Now, one user actually reported that the update would reach 27% or 100% completion and then fail and restart. Watching that happen repeatedly is legitimately a form of torture. Now, file sharing using SMB version 1 was affected. SMB v1 is ancient and insecure, so Microsoft probably considers this a feature, not a bug. Now, they've been trying to kill SMB v1 for years, so mission accomplished, I guess. The Windows Media Creation Tool broke for ARM64 devices, and these devices could previously create installation media for x64 computers, which is a useful feature. But then it just stopped working. I mean, the tool would display an error. We're not sure what happened, but we're unable to run this tool on your PC. I mean, at least it was honest about not knowing what happened. That's more transparency than we usually get. Microsoft updated the Media Creation Tool on October 28th. Now, whether this is fixed is pretty much up to the user. Now, should you install Windows 11 25H2? Let me answer that with several more questions. Do you have a Wi-Fi 7 router? No? Then you're not missing much. Do you desperately need to remove ClipChamp via group policy? If you're even asking this question, you probably work in enterprise IT and have already deployed it. Is your computer currently working? Then maybe wait. If it's not broken, let Microsoft break it for you in a few months when the update becomes mandatory. Are you a Windows insider who enjoys living dangerously? Install it immediately. 
Report bugs feel important, Microsoft may or may not read your feedback, but you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that you are a canary in the coal mine. Now, my honest answer, version 25H2 doesn't add much if you're already on 24H2. It's the same operating system with minor tweaks and a version number change. Now, the bugs have mostly been patched, but if you wait a few more weeks, even more bugs will be patched. Or you could install it now and become part of the statistics. Microsoft's telemetry thanks you for your service. Now, Windows 11 25H2 is technically an improvement. It has better security, faster updates, and support for networking standards you don't have. It also launched with bugs that broke USB input in recovery mode, prevented DRM content from playing, and caused localhost to forget what localhost actually means. Now these bugs have been mostly fixed, we think, until the next cumulative update introduces new ones. Now, this is Windows, this is normal, so if you expected anything different, you may have had a brick dropped on your head as a kid. So thank you for watching, please update your drivers, all of them, and I will see you in the next video.